Hi, uh, Lord Magicus, and today we got something special. We are going to play the People's Canon in Modern. So let me get this sent out in a second here, and then we'll talk about how the hell this monstrosity of a deck works, and then we'll play some games and see how that goes. All right, let's see here. Come on. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to this. This is going to be entertaining as hell. <laughs> All right. Let's send it out. Okay, um, that should do it. All right. Let me get this back up. And, all right, we are just about ready to start here. So, this is uh, the People's Canon, also known as Goblin Charbelcher. Um, this is a Oh, nope, nope, no, come back. We need you. <laughs> so, this is a deck that actually exists in Legacy. It, um, basically, the plan is you want to cast this card, Goblin Charbelcher. And this card is a four mana artifact that you can pay three and tap it. And you start flipping cards off the top of your deck until you reveal a land, and then however many cards you reveal, it deals that much damage to whatever t you targeted with it. And if the if you reveal a mountain with it, it deals double that damage. But what happens when you don't have any lands left in your deck at all? Well, what happens then is you take your entire deck and you flip it upside down and you hand it to your opponent and say, you take this many. So usually they're going to take about 40 or so damage when you activate this cannon. And when you activate it, they will die. That that's all there is to it. Um, the yeah, this deck is capable of winning on turn one if you have a perfect hand. But yeah, turn two, three, or four kills are totally reasonable with it. It only plays three lands in the deck. So the strategy for how to win with this deck is you want to cast. Well, you need to start with a mana source. So you have stuff like Chancellor of the Tangle or Simeon Spirit Guide, or just trying to draw one of the lands naturally. So you have to get one of those, and then you have to start casting these cards like Renegade Map here, or Attune with Aether, or Traverse the Olvenwald, to search out the basic lands from your deck. And once you get the first green source, then getting the rest of them becomes easy, because we have a lot of these land search cards in our deck. So the goal is search for as many different for search for all all three lands out of the deck, and then you're then at that point all you have to do is either play Goblin Charbelcher and activate it, or there's this other really cool card called Recross the Paths. What is Recross the Paths? Well, at first glance, you will look at this card and say, "Oh, this is a dumb three mana green sorcery that just puts a land into play tapped." and then it gets to Clash, so maybe you get it back to your hand. But that is not why we're playing this card. We are doing dumb things in our deck, so we are only playing cards that do dumb things. Recross the Paths really reads uh, two colorless and green. Um, this card is Doomsday and Modern. You, t you flip your entire deck, and then you reorganize it the entire however you want. So for three mana, you get to stack your whole deck. Well... Stacking your entire deck, huh? What are we going to do with that? I mean, that seems like that should be really powerful, right? Well, you know what? As a matter of fact, it is. Because we have this card called Reforge the Soul. Everybody discards their hand, then draw seven, and it has a miracle cost of two. So you can, after casting Recross the Paths, set it up so that your next turn you are going to draw Reforge the Soul as your first card, since you get to stack your whole deck. 
And then the seven cards underneath it will be a bunch of rituals and a goblin charbelcher. So you will typically have three lands in play when you cast the reforge. So you tap two and discard your whole hand to draw seven. So you'll have one more mana left from that. So then you go put a Simeon Spirit Guide in. So you have two. And then you can go Pyretic Ritual, three. Pyretic Ritual, four. Desperate Ritual, splicing a second Desperate Ritual onto it. So that'll put you to six. Then you cast the Splice Desperate Ritual. So that puts you to seven mana. Then you use the seven to cast, the, or use four of the seven to cast Charbelcher and the other three to activate it. And that still leaves you usually uh, one extra card slot. So if you are short a land for some reason, you can use you can just take another spirit guide. Um, if you're worried about your opponent having a counter spell, because they get to draw seven cards too. You can just put Pact of Negation as your seventh card. So that even if they draw a counter spell, you can just counter their counter. Or if there is something annoying on board that uh, like maybe uh, Phyrexian Revoker, for instance you can take Slaughter Pact and just blow it up. And if you have a Simeon Spirit Guide when you actually go off with three Fords of Soul, then you'll actually have ex one extra mana in your hand to go off with, so then it lets you do even other more dumb things like also cast Nature's Claim the turn that you need to win. In general, um, the idea is you just want to flip your entire deck one way or another and just win by showing your opponent that you only have three lands in your deck and they will end up taking a bunch of damage from this and die. So, the, that's the basic overview of how this works. Um, we have some Mana Morphos and some Wild Cantors to help filter out the colored mana a little bit. It makes the keeps with like just the basic Mountain to start with a little bit easier because you can go Mountain into Cantor and then change this into a green mana and then cast something like Traverse for the forest. Um, yeah, and then let if we look at the sideboard here, we have some really interesting cards. Uh, we're gonna bring we have more Pact of Negations for the control decks. Um, here we have some Lightning Bolts. They they come in randomly. Uh, Magus of the Moon is a very interesting sideboard plan. We'll, we'll call that. We'll get we'll get yeah. That's Plan B. There are some decks where if you just cast a turn one Magus of the Moon, they literally can't win because they see oh you're just playing a deck that is entirely has nothing to do with creatures, so let's side out all the removal and be extremely weak to it. So, Magus of the Moon by itself can kill them, and why are we playing Magus of the Moon and not Blood Moon? Well, it's simple, because so a lot of decks think that this Nature's Claim that they're going to side in, that they want to try to blow up Charbelcher with, because they have nothing better to bring in. Well, they might be enticed to uh, use it on Blood Moon, but guess what? Nature's Claim does not kill Magus of the Moon, and all the removal they side out does. So, That'll be good for us. Uh, Ingot Chewer is protection against Chalice of the Void. It's just a way to get that off the board, because obviously we have a lot of one-mana spells that we are interested in resolving. Um, we have a second Nature's Claim here, a Mountain. Uh, the Mountain actually comes in against the control deck, so that way you can have four basic lands in play, and you can theoretically get to a point where you just hard cast a Belcher every turn until eventually they run out of counter spells. Uh, and... Now, the last two cards here, you'll notice, Empty the Warrens and Goblin Bushwhacker. So, this, much like the Legacy version of this deck, uh, Empty the Warrens has always been, like, the, the uh, secondary plan to Belcher. So, yeah, what do you do in the face of something like, say, Stony Silence or Leyline of Sanctity? Well, you could try to go in on the plan of blowing it up, but what if they have more than one that you can't deal with? Well, here's an idea, just... Screw it! Who need? Who cares about it? We're, we can go off, if we get to cast Recross the Paths and stack our entire deck, we can stack the whole deck so that we can uh, storm off and just make a bunch of ridiculously powerful hasty goblins. Just uh, cast a bunch of rituals, and then maybe even cast a second Reforge the Soul in one turn that yeah, can draw you into attacking them for you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of like 60 damage with a, with a bunch of hasty goblins. Yeah, that sounds fine to me. And if, sometimes even on like turn one or two, if you just make like eight goblins, that's that's actually good enough against a lot of decks anyway. And it still plays around like any card like Stony Silence that they're trying to bring in to shut you down. Um, some decks, maybe they'll bring in something like Unmoored Ego and they'll name Goblin Charbelcher, but they'll be disappointed to see that 
you can still very easily kill them with Empty the Warrens. So, that gives you a very, very solid secondary plan to go with here. So, this is this is what we're doing. Uh, we're going to play a league with this. This is probably... This deck costs about thirty dollars. So, on, on MTGO, if you want this deck, it's about thirty bucks. And it's it's really fun to play. It's a very all-in kind of deck. So there's a lot of ways it can go wrong, but it it's very entertaining. And for thirty dollars, what more do you really want? <laughs> So, let's get into this now. Let's find us an opponent and see if we can belch him out. We are going to fire the People's Cannon. This, one of the most awesome aspects of this deck is that very few people know anything about this deck at all. It is not a deck that is like very present in the metagame at all. Nobody has a good plan for Belcher because nobody even thinks about Belcher when they're doing sideboards. So they're really stuck with, do they just happen to have something for a different matchup? Because if they don't, then that's going to go pretty poorly for them. Yeah. Alright, winning the die roll is always very good. So with opening hands, your entire goal here is you need to be able to cast uh, these kind of spells. So... We're looking at a Simeon Spirit Guide into a tune with Aether. We'd have to go Spirit Guide, Sack Cantor, and use a tune with Aether. Um, this is this is a very risky kind of hand because we only have one way a way to get one land, and we're not going to have a second way to get like a red land afterwards. But we kind of have to keep a hand like this because you can't afford to mulligan to a hand that does not have a turn one mana source. So this 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 hand is extremely aggressive with mulliganing. And remember this is the we have something like almost twenty of these cards in our deck that do this. So either drawing another land or just finding another one of these cards is totally fine. Alright, Exile Spirit Guide, cast Wild Cantor. Our opponent has no idea what the hell is going on right now. They mulligan to four, so we're going to sacrifice this for green. Cast a tune with Aether. This is a lot better if you have a second uh, spell to cast with it, but we're just going to have to hope for the best here. It might be that this is a hand where we kind of get unlucky and we never draw a way to get more lands out, but that's just that is the gamble that you're taking when you're playing to Belcher in modern. <laughs> so let's find out what the hell he's doing. Maybe he's like Tron or Dredge. Nope, he's Tron. Alright. So maybe it's possible he just doesn't have a good hand, so maybe we can race him if we draw better than he does. Guess we're gonna find out. <sighs> This is definitely a race you matchup. Uh, Renegade map is fine. This lets us get a land and put it in play next turn. Uh, Renegade map is actually very important to this deck because you can, if you start with the mountain in your hand or a Simian Spirit Guide, it lets you search for a land for off of a colorless. So our opponent still probably has no idea what's going on. He was just reading what this card does. Let's see, please do not play more Tron lands. Okay, uh, he might just be stuck on mana. That's possible. A mold of four is pretty brutal. So ancient starings, he's just gonna have to hope for the best. So we found power plant, and that's kind of bad for us. All right. So the trick here with Renegade Map is if you want to draw a land, you wait till after you draw. If you do not want to draw the land, uh, you do it in the upkeep. That's why I have a pause here. But since we actually want the last land, yeah, that's fine. Because now we can actually sacrifice the Renegade Map.
we, we can get the basic forest and then we'll get the basic mountain with this. I'm not going to play the mountain yet because we might need it against a Karn. I don't realistically think that we could beat Karn if he manages to play it in turn 3, but this is this way we have ourselves a, a turn 4. Or, uh, it'll be, you know, what turn is it now? Uh, yeah, uh, This will be like turn 5 that we can win. So if we can make it to turn 5, he's dead. Because next turn we can play Ritual, play Goblin Charbelcher, and then all we have to do is dodge one turn after that, and we can even use the Pact of Negation to help us. So, basically, he has to ha have nothing this turn, but if he doesn't have anything this turn, then he is going to lose. Because well, next turn we can Ritual, Charbelcher, and have Pact of Negation up to protect ourselves. If he only has something like Walking Ballista, that's not good enough. Even Worm Coil Engine is not good enough. Alright, well this looks like he doesn't have it, so... It's likely that we're going to win this game. The only way... Okay, so... Oblivion Stone, uh, yeah, that's that's not going to race us, unfortunately, for him. Um... Yeah, let's cycle the Street Wraith. Yeah, it doesn't really do anything this turn, but we're going to cast it. We'll cast Charbelcher, and then we counter. We use Pact of Negation on anything that can blow up the Charbelcher. Hopefully, we need him to not have Tron this turn to blow, use the Oblivion Stone. So, if he can't activate Oblivion Stone, then he loses. And if, for some reason, he had like a main deck Nature's Claim or something, this uh, Pact of Negation can keep protect us from that. If he casts like Sylvan Scrying, we can, or something of that sort, we can still counter it with Pact of Negation. Because, in response to the uh, the trigger and the upkeep, we can actually just activate Belcher and kill him. So we have Pact. Like I said, he he basically just needs to not find the tower this turn. If he doesn't have tower this turn, he loses. If he lets us untap with, even if he finds tower, if he doesn't crack the O-Stone, then alright, fuck. So, he has to crack O-Stone now, because if he doesn't, if he lets us untap, he's dead. Like, this is the point at which he has no choice. He, if he doesn't kill this, he dies. Upkeep is not good enough. Yeah, you gotta do this now. Sure. So, now... We're kind of in a lot of trouble because on his mold of four, he still managed to find Tron by turn four. So, all right. Um, Wild Cantor is not particularly helpful to us, but I guess we have to play it. Now we're in a lot of trouble. We had a one turn window where we needed to get there and we just couldn't because if we had had like a second to a land tutor in our opening hand, then we would have been fast enough to race this, but. Unfortunately, not quite. However, he still has to actually do something. So, if we're lucky, maybe we have some time to dick around until we find another Belcher. Expedition map is okay. That's just a mana at this point, and we want him to have mana and not threats. Um, that's not actually terrible for us. That means we are still alive to draw Belcher and Ritual it out next turn. Sure. Ugin and... So, come on. If we draw another Belcher, then we can still get here. But otherwise, this is like the last turn. Okay. No, we're going to do this. So if he cast a Karn or an Oblivion Stone, we're going to pack it. I think we might have this, because he, ca he can't exile a, co yeah, a colorless permanent. <laughs> I think we're going to get there against Tron. This is, this is surprising. I didn't think that this was going to happen. So he has three cards. 
So what are they? If it Ulamog would be bad. We can't beat Ulamog. We can beat Karn though. Thrag Tusk is not gonna do it. Thrag Tusk is uh he's dead. Does not work that way because that's colorless. Minus four does not help you here. See that one or more colors. All right, here we go. We're gonna target his face and we're gonna flip our entire deck. Hadouken! <laughs> and we win. He's at negative eighteen. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Um, so against Tron, these Magus of the Moons are gonna be very good. Uh, the Slaughter Pact is not particularly relevant against his deck. Uh, he's going to probably board in Nature's Claims. That's going to suck. We can side out a Manamorphose. That's a flex card. Uh, you can you can usually side out a few of the, the Land Tutor cards if you want. And I'm going to side out the Street Wraith as well. Excuse me. So here... I mean, turn three Oblivion Stone is certainly a concern. But a turn three Oblivion Stone doesn't actually beat Recross the Paths. Now, there is a possibility he might go turn three Karn in Exile or Mountain. And if he does, that's going to suck. So, otherwise, I, th I don't think we really do much else here. Um, I'll just bring in one more Pact of Negation. And uh, that's it. And uh, this hand is actually, I think this hand is fine. We'll have access to two lands if we need to. We can cast this for the third one. So he chose to keep seven cards, which means it's probably pretty reasonable. All right. Uh, this is actually interesting now because if we really want to, we can re we could try to challenge him with a turn two Belcher and just hope that it's good enough to get there. So let's play Renegade Map. Uh, we could try to Belch him out in turn three and just hope because we'll have one land left in the deck at that point. And that means if he plays Oblivion Stone in turn three, that still wouldn't be good enough. Because we can play Belcher next turn and then activate it in his third turn. Now, that line is actually very, very weak, though, to him having a Nature's Claim. But if he's got two Tron lands already, I might be inclined to do that. Because the, the chance that he plays, like, turn three Karn is also kind of high. Though the only problem with doing this plan is we may not be able to activate the... If he exiles a land, we won't be able to activate it. Um, so in this case, I think we do want to draw the land, so we're going to take the draw step first. Uh, no, we do not want to reforge the soul. However, we do want to use this renegade map. I think here we probably just challenge him to see if he has it. Because we're still live that... If we draw like another ritual, or if we draw a land, that we can still activate it and kill him. Now, if he plays the Karn, he could just exile the Belcher, though. That's a problem. Uh, so, so what else can we do here? Um, we don't actually know if he has it, so we lose to Karn. If he if he has like anything else, though, I think we win against anything that's not Karn in turn three. Recross the paths. We'll. S that's going to be a win in two turns as opposed to... Because we'd have to cast it, get a land this t Well, actually, no. It, it's two turns from now, whereas this will win on our next turn. I think I'm willing to gamble on this Goblin Char Belcher. We'll hold up the Spirit Guide. If he doesn't do anything, then we can exile the Spirit Guide to activate the cannon. So now he has to play Karn this turn, and if he doesn't play Karn, I don't think... Well, oh, Karn or Nature's Claim, like, he, he has to kill the Belcher. If he can't kill it this turn, then we just kill him. 
So I, that's what we got to do, and we just got to hope for the best now. And if he does kill this thing, then we'll, we still have a backup plan of Exile Spirit Guide for Recross the Paths. So let's see, does he have an answer to this thing? Did he keep an answer? Because if not, then we're, we're going to gamble because we can activate it and possibly kill him. We don't know for sure if he's going to die to this or not. There's a forest in the deck, so if the forest is not in the top 20 cards, then he's dead. Sylvan Scrying, okay. So, it it does take us off the Recross the Paths plan, but I, I want to have a chance where we can just maybe go for it and kill him. So, now here's the interesting thing. He did not have an answer for this. He, he had to look for a Tron land. So right now we can gamble. We have roughly like a 60% chance of killing him if we want to activate this right now. Or we can at, or we could play recross the paths and get a forest and then guarantee that he's dead the next turn. But it's a matter of how many turns. Do we want to gamble on 60% versus whatever stupid shit he has, like maybe World Breaker or maybe he's going to draw something? Because... He might have just assumed that we couldn't kill him because we don't have a third mana. This gives him... Yeah, it is slightly better, but you know what? We're not playing this deck because we're... <laughs> we want to play fair magic. We're going to go for it. Let's kill him. Alright. Gamble. Damn it! <laughs> All right, well, we tried. So, is the revealed card, yeah, is the land still on top? Is that just how this works? Yeah, we're F6ing through his turn. He's at four. <laughs> All right, until you reveal land. Oh no, the land is on, on the bottom in any order, so we'd have to draw like another ritual in order to kill him. He has Karn, so that that's a problem. If we if we had gone with this recross plan, then we would not have been able to stop this Karn from uh, disrupting us, I think. It's okay, we we're not out of this yet, so we can still draw a land and cast recross the path and set up a turn to kill or a, a kill in two turns. Ugin the Spirit Dragon does not actually do anything against our deck. That is not helpful to us right now because we can't cast it. Oh no. That's so you know what? Fine. We're we're up a game so we can afford to take stupid chances in this. We're playing a really dumb deck. The smart thing for him to do right now would be to minus Karn on one of these lands. That was definitely wrong. We're giving him Chancellor of the Tangle. Because we are absolutely never casting that. He sh absolutely needed to exile a land there. And the fact that he didn't... Is okay, never mind. So, we're dead. <laughs> we're, we, we straight up lose to that. So uh, the good news is that we have a much, much better game plan against him when we're on the play. So we don't really need to make any other changes here. Uh, yeah, we're fine. We could board in the mountain, but I want to just be able to try to kill him. Uh, well, we're just going to keep it as is and run it back. Yeah, well, the, the thing is, like, there is a very good chance because he didn't have Tron that turn. He had to use the Sylvan Scrying to find it. Maybe he just couldn't cast Karn, but he did have it in his hand the whole time. So I think we absolutely had to try to just kill him. All right. Um, this hand is actually really good. This hand is pretty great, in fact. We're going to keep... Because we can turn one, go uh, Renegade map, and turn two, we're going to play uh, Magus of the Moon. No, 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 no. Blood Moon dies to the nature's claims that they're going to board in to try to kill off Goblin Charbelcher. 
but what deck is going to board in, like, Lightning Bolt against the deck that has, like, almost no creatures in it? <laughs> you got to next level them. And I've also killed players by just attacking with ma multiple Magus of the Moons for lethal damage, because there's nothing they could do about it. So we'll play map, we'll crack map in the upkeep, and then we'll play Magus of the Moon in turn two. Because this ought to keep him off of doing anything for quite some time. And even if he were to, like, Nature's Claim this Renegade map, um, that's totally fine because that means it's not going to hit this Charbelcher. So, this was a surprisingly strong keep, I think. And then any future, like, Lay of the Land cards, we can throw them away with Faithless Looting. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Alright. So, let's sacrifice Renegade map. We're going to get the forest, because the forest can find the mountain, but if we get the mountain and something bad happens to our forest, the mountain can never find the forest. So then we'll draw for turn. Okay, that's not bad. Let's see him get mad about this. Good luck! <laughs> now we have, like, all the time in the world to figure out what we're doing. See, I don't... He'd have to have, like, Dismember or something, and I don't think he even boarded that in. Maybe if he can get to four lands, he can try to go for Walking Ballista on two? But we're definitely looking at, we're going to get the mountain next turn, and then we'll Faithless Looting, and then try to find a way to put these Belchers in play. He looked for Forest, so that means he's probably going to use, he's going to go for Ancient Stirrings to try to dig for an answer. Oh, that's actually fantastic. Alright, um, so first we got to do this. And honestly, we might just... Is there any reason to play Faithless Looting now? Uh, let's attack him first. Actually, yes, because if we, we can trade this Charbelcher with a pa or Pact of Negation. That, yeah, that, that might be helpful to our plan. Because he's going to have to take at least one turn to deal with this before anything can happen to us. So, I am willing to use this Faithless Looting just to look for a Pact. Because next turn we're not going to be able to cast it because we need to go for a Belcher next turn. Uh, we don't need Traverse, and uh, the Ritual, we don't need a second Ritual. One, one Ritual will suffice. And pass turn. So next turn we're going to Ritual a Belcher into play, and then hopefully activate it the turn afterwards. And if everything goes well, he's not going to be able to do anything about this Magus of the Moon in the time yeah, that it takes us to get this Charbelcher online. Yeah, recross the paths. If we draw that next turn, we'll definitely cast recross instead of the Charbelcher. Because recross like straight up plays around any possible spell he could have. He might want to hold up Nature's Claim for this at the moment. That's entirely possible. But if we draw another Ritual, then like we can just play the other one anyway. There's a lot of ways this can go right for us. Um, Alright, well let's attack first. Because this way we force him to have to have Nature's Claim or he's just dead on the spot.
I mean, that's possible, but I think that the odds that he's going to have um, Nature's Claim are higher than the odds that we're going to draw into another ritual. And I mean, we still have tons of drill. Like I said, if we draw recross the paths, then that's still fine. We can still get there with that. But now he's in a position where if he doesn't kill this before we untap, then he dies. So, time to show us. Do you have a nature's claim? Looks like it. Sure. And then next turn, we can actually flashback Faithless Looting and just look for something. This is a deck that definitely gets better with the London Mulligan, because it, it is a very, very, very Mulligan-heavy deck. But he, he could be looking at maybe casting Oblivion Stone. Casting Ancient Stirring suggests that he doesn't, or he's still looking for some way to get out of this. I mean, he could. There, there are definitely draws he has that he can find his way out. Thought Not Seer is not good enough. Because he does not have colorless mana to cast it. I don't know if he actually realizes that, to be honest. You have O-Stone. Please don't play O-Stone. Alright. This looks promising. He might just have to try to play like six or seven lands in order to be able to do anything now. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to flashback Faithless Looting. We'll discard both of these since they're both dead cards. Uh, that's actually fantastic. So then next turn we can recross and set ourselves up for a kill. And we'll still have Spirit Guide even if he manages to like exile one of our lands. That the recross will probably be good enough by itself. The only thing we have to kind of worry about is him like killing Magus of the Moon and finding Ulamog for the turn afterwards. We can beat losing one land as long as we don't lose both lands. Or or do we yeah, we have to have at least two lands on, in play to do this. So this is really the turn where he has to find a way to do something. Like, O-Stone is not... I don't think O-Stone's good enough at this point. I guess it'd have to be, like, Dismember. Sure, keep Ancient Stirrings. It's not going to help you. Now it is worth noting we've gone through two desperate rituals already, so really this turn we do not want to draw the third and four, or fourth one. Because in order to go off uh, in his turn, uh, we really want to have two desperate rituals, ideally. Because that also lets us go off with like a Pact of Negation in our hand if we want. Not that I think he's going to have anything that's going to matter. What do you got for four red? Oh, I think he's trying to cast... Wait. No, are you trying to cast Thought Not Seer? Yeah, you can't cast Thought Not Seer because those are mountains. They don't make colorless mana. So, yeah, you can cast Chromatic Star now. That does not make colorless mana either, though. So, what do you got? I guess if he has Walking Ballista, that could be good enough. This is true. We do have two Samian Spirit Guides left, so if we had to, we could replace a Desperate with an extra Spirit Guide. You have to have Walking Ballista to kill this this turn, and then Ulamog next turn to kill two of my lands. I think that's the only way this works. That, I don't think, is good enough. Sure. Like, if there, I don't know what you're going to do with one red. Chromatic Star? Okay, fine. 
I mean, I guess he thinks he has a lot more turns, but realistically he has exactly one more turn. Alright. Let's attack first. We don't get to attack very often, so you gotta savor these little things. Yeah, I don't think that there's anything he can do this turn, because now he... I think he's just dead. Now we're going to recross the paths. We're going to stack the deck so that we put uh, a lethal combination on top, and when we untap and draw our card for the turn, he's dead. Dead as a doornail. Alright, so we will, we will put uh, Chancellor on top first. Uh, then reforge the soul. Okay, then we go. Now we have seven cards here, so we're gonna put Charbelcher, Ritual, Ritual, uh, Simeon, Simeon. So that's six. Pyretic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am definitely the villain here. And then we'll put a Pact of Negation up. And then we'll put a Nature's Claim underneath that just in case things go wrong. Alright, and then the rest go in any order. Sure. And we're going to put that in the bottom. That way the recross goes back to our hand, so if for some reason we get disrupted, we can try again next time. Yeah, I... <laughs> It does feel good to be a villain against Tron. That is that is absolutely correct. Uh, and then we pass. Alright. We just cast Doomsday in Modern. How good does that feel? And we didn't even have to pay half of our life and exile like all but five cards of the deck. We just got to keep all of our life and reorder the entire deck the way we want because Modern Doomsday is awesome. Yeah, I don't think there's anything he can have here in this turn that's going to do it. Unless he, like, has Dismember in his deck somehow, for some reason. <laughs> like, that... <laughs> it, it feels extremely unlikely that he can remove Magus of the Moon and exile two lands this turn. Because that's what it's going to take. <laughs> oh, this this is this is beautiful. It's like watching poetry. All right. You want to play like Thrag Tusk? Yeah, okay, Thrag Tusk is fine. Well, no, no, the problem is that he'd have to I think he'd have to tap too many lands in order to get rid of um Magus of the Moon, that there's no way he could cast Ulamog and get rid of Magus in this turn. Like, that's what he'd realistically have to do. So. Uh, yes, we're gonna reveal this. Um. Sure. Heck, yeah, we may as well. Yeah, we're gonna cast this Reforge the Soul. All right, here we go. Cards for everybody. All right. So let's see, what did he have? He had Oblivion Stone, he had Karn Liberated, Thought Not Seer, and Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Oh, that's rough. He must have just, like, drawn the Oblivion Stone, like, the last, like, turn, because he otherwise he should have played it. All right, so uh, we're going to Exile, Exile... Pyretic. He can gain as much life as he wants. He's going to take like... how much? He's going to take like 34 damage this turn. Uh, I will tap this guy. Ritual. Splice Ritual. Uh, 
I should attack with this Magus just for... Well, no, I, sh I could have attacked with it first just to rub it in, but... Oh, yeah, this has to resolve. <laughs> he, he is uh, definitely losing right now. Storm count is four. <laughs> Charbelcher... Okay, and uh, let's fuck up his whole life. This is what you get for being a filthy Tron player. <laughs> you want to play dumb decks in modern? I'm going to play a dumber deck in modern. That's how this is going to go. <laughs> uh, feels beautiful. Uh, no, let's just rub it in. I had literally everything. There is nothing you could do here. Even if you blow it up, it doesn't matter, but I'm countering it just because I can. And he is now at negative 17. Good game, opponent. So, uh, okay, we won our first match against Tron. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try to do it four more times. That's the power of $30 in modern. <laughs> Who says you need expensive decks in order to whoop Tron's ass? I don't feel bad at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm the villain here. I get I get to enjoy this. <laughs> this is going to be amazing. Alright. Round two. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know if I'd want to go up against Tron four more times, because that can go very south if they have, like, the turn three Karn. Like, they have pretty good disruption, but... Um... So, I think we actually... Oh, this is... This sucks, because we we have looting online, and we have a land, but we can't actually cast any of the traverses, and we need to be able to cast this. We have to mulligan this hand. Uh, this hand is actually no better. We're going to have to mulligan this one, too. This deck mulligans extremely aggressively. Uh, that That's just how it goes. But... We, so we mulligan to six. Yeah, we had to go to five. Uh, we can keep this. We can go turn one renegade map. And I want to put that on the... It's not a card that I'm really interested in drawing. I don't need to be cycling these because all of these cards are probably going to be relevant. Um, sure. Upkeep. Draw. Exile. Renegade map. And I'm, I'm not going to, well, actually, no, I should crack an upkeep because I don't want to draw land because we, we want to be able to tutor for him. So, yeah, I will upkeep crack this, and that way, hopefully, the odds that we'll draw one of the two forests will be a little bit lower. This looks like it might be Phoenix. That'd be fine, actually. Like, so upkeep, sacrifice, um, get a forest. Okay, and draw for turn. Alright. Caravan Vigil. You're not countering this, come on. There's no way. Are you really? No, it's just op. Okay, you like had me scared that he's going to spell pierce this. Because that actually would have hurt quite a lot. Excuse me. Ugh. As always, I am enjoying my nice uh, Southern Comfort alcoholic beverage. Uh, we'll get the mountain off of this one. Actually, well, we already played a land this turn, so it, it really doesn't matter. But this does give us the option if we top deck a Belcher, then maybe we can go Ritual Ritual into it. Maybe if we want to do that. 
So opt again. Hmm. Oh, that's going to be premium because he's never going to see this coming. All right. So we'll play the mountain and we'll play traverse. I don't, yeah, okay. So he just F6 in the turn. That's fine. So next turn we'll cast recross the paths and then the turn after that we can try to kill him. He wants to know what the hell is going on. He's just gonna he's gonna look at this and have no idea what this card even does. He's just gonna be like, oh, that's just some stupid he draws a land card, right? That is not what's gonna happen here. Is this gonna be like Blue Moon or something? Maybe. Or maybe this is a this could be uh the red blue living end deck. I still feel like it looks like... Okay, no, so we got something spicy going on. There's a four-color deck. Oh, it's Jeskai Ascendancy! Okay, I see what's going on. Alright, Jeskai Ascendancy. So how do we, like, deal with this? Alright, um... that We might actually be okay against that. All we have to do is just resolve, reforge the soul, and we're gonna win. I don't think he's gonna counter this. I think he just thinks that I'm going to get a basic land, but that's not what happened. <laughs> Surprise, opponent! Alright, uh... So let's put Chan... Uh, so Chancellor... Yeah, you gotta be careful about how you click this, because um, MTGO lags a little bit when you're clicking on them. So Reforge... Uh, how do we want to do this after that? If Reforge the Soul gets countered somehow, I want the Belcher on top because I do have Rituals in my hand. And then we can also afford to play Pact of Negation with it, so go Belcher, Pact, and Mana Monkey. So, so Belcher, Pact, Simeon, so then we go Simeon. And then we go Ritual, Ritual, and then one Pyretic. And then, I don't know, maybe another Belcher on the bottom, and then like a Nature's Claim. Sure. We'll do it like that. Alright, fine. I, I don't actually know if they have counter spells in their deck, to be honest. I mean, that's possible we could do that, but I think that maybe he thinks that, um, he might not, uh, think that it'd be fine. If he gets to draw seven cards, then he's not worried. I don't know. But in any case, even, even if he, uh, even if he counters it, we'll still be drawing Belcher the turn afterwards, and we can put it in play with a ritual. All right. So opponent has to do something this turn or have a counter spell, and if they don't, then we win. I think he can possibly go off this turn, but it's not likely. I think he's just going to wish and then put uh, Just Guy Ascendancy into his into play. He's going to tap out for this. But if that's his plan, then he's going to die. So if he... So he's not... I don't think he's attacking. The question, the question is, is he going to go for Ascendancy this turn? No. So maybe he just... All right, uh, we're going to reveal Reforge the Soul. Um, there's no point in casting the Rituals because he can just counter any one of these, and we only need two mana for this anyway. Sure. We're going to try Reforge the Soul and see if he has a counterspell. He might have a Remand, actually. Remand would kind of suck. Uh, it puts us two turns off. What are you doing? Okay. I don't think that's going to help you this turn. If that's your plan, that's not going to be good enough. Uh, yeah, we're going to cast this Reforge. That makes me feel like it's going to resolve. 
Okay, no, I think we're just gonna kill him. All right. Uh, madness. All right. So let, what did he discard? What does this do? Okay. I don't think that matters. Like he's still dead. I'm so I just want to see what fate stitcher, retraction helix. Uh, fine. Whatever. So exile mana monkey. Forest pyretic. Spirit Guide. He probably does not know what's going on right now. Alright, I think we're going to get him. It's looking promising. Here we go. Belcher, come on. Opponent, say hello to my little friend. <laughs> I'm a fire in my laser. <laughs> this is beautiful. Get dunked on, opponent. <laughs> All right, begin sideboarding. <laughs> That was beautiful. All right, so uh, we definitely want Nature's Claim to blow up his Jeskai Ascendancy. Um, the Slaughter Pack does not hit the Carotid, but it does maybe hit the f the Fate Stitcher. So I don't know if we want that or not, to be honest. Um, he plays a lot of non-basic lands in his deck, and there's a good chance that he's not going to have like Lightning Bolts afterwards. So. We probably do want some number of Magus of the Moon. So. Yeah, let's bring in Magus. I think that Magus can really hurt him a lot. We have two Nature's Claims, and I really want one more Path to Exile. Or, or I'm sorry, Pact of Negation. I think that card's going to be important. He has access to, like, Glittering Wish, so he might try to look for something like Slaughter Games in the sideboard. That's entirely possible. So, for that reason... Yeah, we'll cut one more of these guys. Alright, we'll go like this. And then if he shows us something dangerous, then we can just um, go with the Belcher plan. Uh, this hand is a Mulligan. Well, I, oh, I don't know. Maybe it's not, actually. We can cast Traverse to get a land. But we have... No, we, we can't keep this, because we have both three, three Forges in the opening hand, and we need at least one in the deck, so we got to mulligan that. Uh, this is actually not any better. This is uh, this is definitely worse. No, we got a mulligan. Nope. Keep going. Uh, <laughs> keep going, I guess. Uh, I don't... No, we gotta... Sometimes this is just what happens. Alright, we we keep Basic Forest. That's actually, like, the best one card we could have had. But... And we keep that on top. Alright, well, Mulligan to one is kind of rough. We're not gonna win this game. Uh, the mulliganing on this deck, I think, has about an 85% success rate. So, this is not what exactly what I would call successful. Alright. Cast Forest. We did not... Uh, we won We won against Tron, and we won game one here. So, I guess we're getting Mountain. Alright. We mold to one in game two against uh, Jeskai Ascendancy, so let's see how this goes. But we're two, we we won against Tron two to one, and we're up a game here. <laughs> I mean, our mulligan to one has us with two basic lands, so it's not the worst thing. But he also probably has the combo. So <laughs> okay, sure, we have a spirit guide. That's not helping. <laughs> he has to not kill us for, like, at least a minimum of three turns. Uh, 
uh, next turn we'd have to find a way to put another land into play, and then draw a Belcher, and then activate it and kill him. Yeah, lands are just like combo pieces, aren't they? Uh, that's not good enough. So I think we're... S well, no, here's the thing. If we draw a Goblin Charbelcher, I'm definitely just playing it and hoping for the best at that point. Like, we're not out of this game at a Mulda 1. I've never won at a Mulligan the 1 with any deck before. The lowest I've ever won anything is a Mulda to 3. I have, I've won against a deck that kept 7 cards and I had a Mulda 3, so... Uh, this is true. We, if we draw Reforge the Soul, we could Miracle into it. Maybe that, then we get there. It's possible. We're looking for some saving. Alright, Renegade map is actually fine, because then next turn we can... Any of our eight win conditions are alive for our two-turn kill. Alright, we're, we're trying. We're, we're not out of this yet, but... Uh, it, we're not dead yet, so. But he could just play Ascendancy at any time now, and then we could be fucked. Uh oh, that looks bad. Yeah, he's. Alright, so there's Ascendancy. Alright, are we dead? Do we lose? I don't think that we're winning this game. <laughs> sure, you peek. I have two spirit guides. That's my master plan. Okay. You have retraction helix? So we're basically just waiting this turn to see if he kills us. And if it's not this turn, it's almost definitely next turn. Oh, that's bad. Now we now he's online. Like there's very, very little chance that we lose here. Sure. You saw my hand, you know I can't cast spells anyway. Why are you silencing me? You have perfect information. It's just a waste of a silence, like, unless you have just no other spells to cast. Alright, sure. So, uh, hey chat, what's going on? <laughs> just, uh, I got nothing going on right now, I'm just kind of waiting to see when I die. I I believe that I'm dead. He has two ascendancies online. Anybody do anything cool recently? He's gonna spell pierce his own ascendancy just for the mana. <laughs> That's hilarious. He has to be desperate for cards to play if that's the case, like... Hmm. Alright, is your last card an instant or sorcery? No! You just attack for four, you have one card left? Alright, maybe we can do this! <laughs> uh, so, I'm actually not going to crack Renegade Map, just in case we draw Reforge the Soul. <laughs> okay, I guess let's... <laughs> You have one turn. Can you do anything with it? <laughs> oh, all right. Um, sure. <laughs> Kill me this turn, or you're dead to my mulligan to one. <laughs> Please, please, for the love of God, just have, like, a land in your hand and just draw another land. Please, please, just have nothing. Have nothing. 
All right. No! Damn it! No! All right, well, again, if he fizzles out here somehow, miraculously, like if the top, like, four cards of his deck are just lands, then I think we can still kill him on a mulligan to fucking one. <laughs> <laughs> I love that we mulligan to one and we have a kill on board, so he has to actually win this turn. Like, I imagine at this point he just has to. Like, now, now there's no way he doesn't. He would have had to have had a land left in his hand from last turn and then draw another land. So, we almost won with a mold of one. That, that... Unfortunately, if we had drawn this, like, maybe one turn earlier, we could have actually got there. That, that's just crazy. Alright, well, I'm sure, have fun, opponent. This is your deck. You can play it however you'd like. Show me a bunch more cards that are in your deck that I don't know about. So you did bring you brought in silence, swan song, spell pierce. All right, swan song does not hit artifacts though. I'm actually very surprised. I guess he just needs something to counter like reforge the soul. So his plan is he very much wants to have counter spells. So maybe we bring in echoing truth instead. Or no, I'm sorry, uh, empty the warns. That's possible. I still think that if we can get like a turn one Magus online, then he's just straight dead to that. His his deck has probably one, maybe two basic lands in it. I see. Uh, I see. Flooded strands, Horizon Canopy, Bi Botanical Sanctum, Windswept Heath. I don't. See, I have not seen a basic land from him. I don't think. Alright, now I think he's just going to cast Invoke the Fire Mind. That's going to be his win con. So he's just trying to make lethal with it. <laughs> yeah, he's still uh, he's still going for it. He revealed uh, Invoke the Mind. Okay, so he's going to deal X damage. Why, why 8? I don't understand. Do you have the spell that copies it? He has not played any Lightning Bolts. The only removal spell he's had so far is Invoke the Fire Mind, and that is not going to beat a Magus of the Moon, so... I still want to know why he only cast this for 8. He, he probably could have waited longer and gone for a bigger amount of damage than that. Maybe he just desperately needed the triggers. I don't know, maybe it's possible. He has three cards left if he can't actually do anything. Oh my god. Are we are we gonna get there? Oh no, he, it's because it's, it, it's, it has 11 power, that's why. So he only needed to deal 8 damage. Alright, now we're dead. Damn it! Our mold of 1 almost got there. <laughs> I think that we're fine with this. Um, we might want another Pact of Negation. You know what? I'll take out a Manamorphos. We'll just play another Pact. That's fine. The Metamorphos are really only important when you're trying to go for, like, Empty the Warrens. Very rarely outside of that does it matter. Yeah, that's, he, he was able to attack for lethal, so... Um, let's see here. This is a mulligan. Uh, we can keep this, actually. This hand's fine. Charbel, well, it doesn't matter. We're because we're gonna shuffle it away with uh, lay of the land. All right. Well, we still have nature's claims in our deck to deal with that. I'm gonna hold back on spirit guide because next turn, if we draw Magus, we can actually uh, ritual it out. Damn it. So close. Alright. If you think Leyline's going to stop me from killing you, that's not going to be good. Oh, he played a basic island. Okay. That's pretty good.
So, we could be in trouble. <laughs> do we? I guess we just do this now before he actually... So here's the question. We have one more left in our deck. Do we want to blow this up now before he actually does anything dangerous? You know what? I think I'm going to looting here because if I can find another way to get lands, I want to get another land this turn. So I'm going to exile Spirit Guide for a red. I'm going to cast looting. We do have Magus of the Moon, and we have a Traverse, so let's get rid of Chancellor and get rid of Pyretic Ritual. Um, so here's the question. Uh, we can Traverse now, and if he taps out next turn, I can just... Nat well, I have all the time in the universe to worry about Nature's claiming this, but this way, if he taps out next turn, we can actually just Magus him, and then he's probably toast. So I'm fine with this line. I, I want to hold off on these until I have a better idea of what his game plan is. If he plays like Sylvan Carry to this turn, then he's probably in a lot of trouble. <clears throat> Though the counter spells that he showed us are like Spell Pierce and Swan Song. So we could go for Pyretic Ritual right now and force him to waste a counter spell on this. I think I'm willing to because I don't think he has a one mana counter if he lets it resolve. I'm going to force him to burn a counter spell if he has one. Okay, that's bad for him. I think maybe he thought our plan might be Blood Moon, but I don't think he was expecting Magus. And now it's going to hurt him a lot because he doesn't have Sylvan Carotid to still cast spells. So he's going to be limited to just some yeah, cantrips. Alright. The opt is not good enough. Now we have all the time in the universe to do something. Sure. Go for it. <laughs> have fun, opponent. Sure. He's just got to... I don't know what he's digging for, but I mean, he the fact that he started with the island's pretty good, but at least we're keeping him off of casting his important spells. Um, hmm. Yeah, again, I want a Faithless Looting because I really want to find, well, no, I should actually wait one more turn because I want to have a second card that's actually bad to throw away, but... I am willing, I think, to kill this ley line right now while he's tapped out. We will faithless looting next turn when we have a second card that we can that's dead that we can trade for something useful. Sure, well, let's attack. I don't think there's anything you can do about it. He found a basic planes. Oh shit, now he can actually hard cast Ascendancy. Alright, let's cast Traverse. Uh, I'm not going to attack him with Magus anymore. Just for the sheer reason that... Yeah, attacking him with Magus means he could flash in something like Snapcaster Mage and that would be devastating. Uh, Faithless Looting, I want to hold on to this in case I do draw a Charbelcher, so that way I can ritual it out, so I'm just going to pass. We got some time still, I think. He can't get his Carotid online, so... And he did not play Ascendancy because he was clearly afraid of dying. If he taps out, though, at any moment, he is potentially in a world of shit. So once Belcher's online, like, his options get real hard. Because he doesn't have, like, Nature's Claim up anymore. Okay. He discarded a Fate Stitcher. Alright. So here, I think I'm willing to cast a Faithless Looting. Uh, a Tune with Aether is straight dead. I'm gonna hang on to the Reforge the Soul, I believe. We'll throw away Pyretic Ritual. And then we'll pass. There's a chance we might end up hard casting this reforge.
As long as his life total doesn't get above like 40-ish, then I don't care. We can still do 40 damage. Alright, well now he's going to know what's up. So... <clears throat> Okay, well, we've entered a very, very dangerous game. Recross the paths would be really good, so now he's just going to jam Ascendancy, I'm guessing. He has seven cards in hand, though, so we can screw up his entire hand with Reforge. Oh, never mind. Uh, we're going to do this. We're really good at this game, apparently. And I don't think he can actually win next turn. Well, no, he has Fate Stitcher, so... We're kind of inclined to actually go for something here. So, Chancellor goes first. Now, the question is, do we want to try to take a turn off? Because if he doesn't go for it, then this Pact is going to be really important. I think what I'm going to... I really don't like the idea of giving him time. So if he has a counterspell in hand, then this Reforge the Soul is really bad. But what we could do is we could go... Because um, if we go Pact of Negation, then that means the turn afterwards we're guaranteed to be able to get there. But that means he has to also not combo for like two turns. And he did just play Ascendancy. Hmm. However, I with seven cards in hand, he was not casting anything for a lot of turns. I think we need to just try to hope that we can kill him in two turns. And, like, we're going to have to pass to him at least one more time. Oh, that's rough, though. Because he could very, he could just have like Swan Song and really fuck up her life. But if he's pl if he doesn't go for it and he thinks he's going to counter this, then putting Pact on top is correct. So here's what I'm going to do: I'm going to put Pact on top. Then I'm going to go Reforge the Soul. Then we'll go with uh, Char Belcher. And then we go Spirit Guide. Uh, so that this will be sp three Spirit Guide. Ritual, Ritual, so Belcher, Spirit, Spirit, Ritual, Ritual, Pyretic, uh, Pact, and then if for some reason we need to, we'll put Nature's Claim underneath that pile. All right. All right, we'll just we'll have to hope that's going to be good enough. I'm actually not going to attack him with Magus of the Moon because I'm going to force I like his life total is not relevant and this also threatens to be a blocker if we need it. So if he thinks he's going to pass the turn and just have a counter spell up, he is sadly mistaken. Alright, it looks like he is going to go for something this turn. Yeah, I mean, he does have a good chance of going off, and unfortunately, there's just not a lot we can do about that. So, we just kind of have to hope for the best here. This way, we have insurance against if he does not win this game, then it seems incredibly likely that we should be able to. But yeah, if he wins this turn, obviously that sucks. But I, I don't think that there was a better way to play this. Yep. Sure. Peak. I think it also very much depends upon whether he can get more mana sources in play besides just this planes and this island. Without the ability to, like, make two mana for untapping something, he's in a lot of trouble, I think. Now he's just trying to cycle and finding more basics or maybe uh, an answer to Magus of the Moon, so I'm, I'm cool with that. But he's not netting mana at the moment.
nagging thoughts, yeah, whatever. So, so chat, while we're waiting for to see if we die again, uh, what's going on? <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> We have to dodge two turns, because next turn we're going to draw Pact, but we can't actually use the Pact, if, or otherwise we'll end up dying from it. This is not Merfolk, this is the People's Cannon. <laughs> what do you got? Are you going to play another Ley Line of Sanctity? Because that's still beatable by us. Cerulean Wisps, okay. That's fine. No, nope, we're doing something incredibly stupid today, Atticus. Right now, we're just waiting to see if Jeskai Ascendancy can string together a kill. But I feel like he's just going to try to cast Leyline and hope that's good enough. But if that's the case, then we, we're actually fine for a little while against Leyline. Leyline's not strong enough to win. Because we have another Nature's Claim underneath our pile of shit. So he might feel confident here just passing the turn, thinking he has a counter spell up and that's going to be fine, but it's actually not fine. Because we're not attempting to cast Reforge the Soul this turn. He's going to be very surprised when we don't actually miracle a spell. So he has another Fate Stitcher in his graveyard, so he can attempt to go off next turn. Sure. You are absolutely fucking crazy if you think I'm blocking. No, in fact, what we'll probably do is just hard cast Simeon Spirit Guide so we have another blocker. Yep. Surprise, we did not miracle something. <laughs> Shocking, I know. But now that I know you actually have this Ley Line of Sanctity, I could actually recross the paths again, and then I could put my Nature's Claim a little bit higher up so I can kill you next turn. Because we still get to keep the Spirit Guide in our hand. I'm totally willing to restack my deck just to ensure that I beat you. That's fine. This is meaningless to me. This was literally just spell pierce bait. All right. Cool. We well, we don't want a pact of negation it now because we can't pay for it in the upkeep. Oh no. He didn't do anything. Okay, that's not going to go well for him at all. Okay, um... Anything you cast this turn, I'm going to counter. Oh, yes, we would love to cast this. All right, uh, we'll tap it like that. Sure, would you like to counter my Reforge the Soul? Um, get that shit out of here. Got him! <laughs> 
Our plan worked! Alright. Well, we're... Oh, no. Oh, shit. I miscalculated. The nature's claim is still underneath the... the... Oh, no! <laughs> what did we do? What? I, I screwed up! We need the nature's claim, but it's it's the nature's claim is the top card of the deck, and unfortunately, pact of negation is the uh, what we put on the on here instead of the other nature's claim, which means I can't actually ley line of sanctity him. All right, maybe we'll just play Charbelcher and he'll concede. That's possible. All right. Yeah, well, unfortunately, we could not do anything about that because I miscounted the reforge pile. What we can, however, do is we can still fire the cannon. It just can't be at our opponent, unfortunately. And we are going to fire this cannon one way or another. Yep. <laughs> I could maybe our opponent's going to time out. He only has 5 minutes left. Yeah, we are, I'm definitely boned because we needed to draw exit one more card in order to have the nature's claim to kill the sanctity so we could kill him before the pack trigger goes off. Uh, excuse me. However, he still has to string it together in like four minutes, so I don't know, maybe maybe we'll get there. I don't think we're going to. I mean, for all he knows, we have like Manamorphos in our hand, or we have a Nature's Claim, or if we, as soon as we untap, we can just kill this thing. So he probably is very scared of passing just because he thinks that we're actually way better than, than I am. <laughs> um, okay. Just, can you concede, please? He can do that, and I'm hoping that he does not do that. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, we can't pay for this. We die. <laughs> nope. We lose. Alright. Well. <laughs> that was rough. Alright. Oh my god. We've only played two games so far. Oh, this is taking forever. That was still very entertaining. I gotta say. We gotta make these games go faster. This is taking just a ridiculous amount of time. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Live by the pact, die by the pact. I think it was probably a mistake. I should have put the pact, of, or I should have put the nature's claim one card higher up and put like another Simeon Spirit Guide or something where that card was. However, there have been times where I played games with this deck where I paid for two pact of negations and a slaughter pact because of like Wild Cantor and Manamorphos. <laughs> And my opponent definitely thought I was going to lose to that. Um, this hand is fine. Uh, we're going to keep this. This hand does things.
Well, Caravan Vigil, we're going to get the Mountain first because we're going to cast Faithless Looting. And then we can play the Forest next turn. That's totally okay. All right, what do we got? Um, Chancellor's dead, and actually, Attune with Aether, we have the other Forest in our hand, so we don't need that either. And if we would like, we can actually flashback to pack or Faithless Looting next turn. We can uh, play Forest, Spirit Guide, and then we can end up discarding the uh, Rituals to just find like turn 3 Recross. Uh, this is probably Blue-White Control. So we are definitely incentivized to do this as quickly as possible. We gotta get underneath the counter spells. Uh, those are both very dead. Alright. We are looking for either Goblin Charbelcher or Recross the Paths next turn. Faithless Looting is a redraw on that. Yeah, so this is definitely blue white. Blue-white control is actually a very winnable matchup, but it's a matchup that takes a long time because you're neither no no player wants to tap out. Um I am fine with just keeping all these cards in my hand. If we draw looting, we want to have as much mana as possible. Or yeah, as many cards to discard as possible. Uh go. Field of Ruin is not going to be helpful against our deck. Now he's got like Cryptic Command online, which is unfortunate. So I can't afford to just jam Charbelcher right now. I need him to tap out first. Cycling, that's okay. We can also wait until maybe we draw Pact of Negation. That's an option. Uh, we can play this guy. Right now, we're basically just waiting till we can try to draw Pact and then play Charbelcher and activate it in one turn. Uh, actually, no, we might be able to just get him now. Because we have four, five, six, seven, well, we, okay, so here's the thing. We might be able to just kill him here. So we're going to go for it. We're going to try to jam Charbelcher, and if he only has like Mana Leak or something, that won't be enough to save him. So we can go, we can exile Spirit Guides and play Pyrotic Rituals if we need. And if he doesn't do anything, then we can just activate it right away. So how do we do this? I guess Pyrotic first. If he counters this, that's fine, too. Sure. Mana Leak is not enough to save you here. Sure. Unfortunately, we won't be able to activate it, so if he has, like, Teferi next turn, that would suck. Oh no, not remand. All right. Um sure. Can we cast it again though? Uh 1 2 3 4. We can actually cast it again. So, I'm going to attack Jace first and then well, we could also pitch the spirit guides to this too. I just have to hope he can't remove Belcher next turn. We'll attack Jace. So uh, exile spirit guide. We'll throw this guy away. Yeah, we're kind of we're we're trying. 
I'm, I'm definitely casting this again, so... Like, now he has to have a cryptic... He has to have, like, cryptic, detention sphere, or teferi. So, we're, ho we're, we're hoping he does not have any of those cards. And if he does, we can still play it again next turn. Well, if he if he just bounces it, we can play it again. So, if if he lets us untap, he's dead. We have lethal on board if we get to untap. Game one is always hard to win against them. Uh, usually, it's like two to fairy, one detention sphere, and then maybe like three cryptic commands. So, I mean, he definitely has options, but. It's a matter of whether he found something. Oh no! No! Yes! Yes! <laughs> He's dead! Alright! We're firing our laser! Hadouken! <laughs> Get fucked! <laughs> Good game, opponent! <laughs> All right. Well, we definitely want the Pact of Negation. Uh, Slaughter Pact is useless here. Uh, we want Nature's Claim, and we want the Mountain. He's probably bringing in some number of Stony Silence. So, because he's bringing in Stony, um, the game is going to go a little bit longer. We could actually try to we could actually try to go for Empty the Warrens. Uh, Magus of the Moon is not a particularly effective plan against their deck because they run a lot of basics. The only thing is that maybe we should go for empty. We just want to have a ton of threats against their deck. We have all the time in the universe, so yeah, let's just have a, more threats and we'll take out like Caravan? No, we want to take out a tune with Aethers first. Um, well, I guess we're... We actually may want Manamorphos, uh, but you know what? I'm, I'm okay with taking it out. And we have to take out one more card. I want to leave in at least three Belchers. Hmm. Well, you know what? Six. We should take out one more thing. All right, we'll take out one more tune with Aether. That's fine. Well, actually, no, 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 no. Uh, we might want to take out Renegade. No, we can't because even if he has Stony Silence, like we still need it. No, it's a, okay. You know what? We have to take out a stone that in the face of Stony. That's fine. We'll do it like that. We don't need as many land searching cards. Uh, so we beat Tron 2 to 1, but we lost to Jeskai Ascendancy 1 to 2. And now we just won game 1 against Control. Uh, we are looking at potentially. This is very dangerous. We only have one way to look for a land and not a lot to do with it. I'm going to mulligan. No, I can't keep this either. Uh, no, here we go. This is how this goes sometimes. Uh, no. Alright, this is fine. I guess we're keeping that. We're going to put that on the bottom. We're going to hope for the best. We almost won with a multi one against Jeskai Ascendancy. Pass. I didn't reveal Chancellor because there was no chance that we were going to need it. So can we win game two against control here? Uh, not without drawing some li or we need more mana sources. If he plays Stony Silence though, I am gonna just Nature's Claim it. They have to be careful, because if they ever tap out, like, they're in danger of just dying, so... Yeah, oh no, he's got a clock now. Yeah, 
We're on a 10 turn clock. We have to do something in 10 turns. That's not doing something. Well, the good news is we get to be on the play for game three, so we'll have a much better chance there. No! Not like this. You live by the mulligan, you die by the mulligan. That's just how it is. Okay, now we're in a lot of trouble. Four turn clock. I don't actually think we can come back from that. Alright, we're going to exile Spirit Guide and we're going to try to Faithless Looting. I'm sure this is going to eat a Counterspell though. That was a mistake. He should not have let me draw on those cards. So we're discarding that and... I am not discarding Goblin Bushwhacker because I don't want him to know that I have that. So I am unfortunately going to have to discard probably Goblin Charbelcher and we're just going to have to go all in on this one. We'll play Renegade Map. Maybe there's a chance that this works. If he sees the Bushwhacker he's going to know about Empty the Warrens and I don't want him to know that's a thing because I want him to just side out settle the wreckage because he thinks it's useless against our deck, but then he's going to get very surprised about that. So we did side in an extra land here. Um, Alright. Looting. Yeah, that's fine. Well, I mean, it's not actually fine, because we're still dead in two turns. But, it is what it is. So we know he brought in Negate. That's expected. Well, the, the nice thing is, at least he doesn't know about Plan B yet. Alright, we lose. Alright, begin sideboarding. Uh, we're not going to make any changes, I don't... Well, do we want to? We actually do have the option to side out the land here. Which I... But the, the only reason we keep the land is if we want to hard cast Belchers, but... Hmm. If we're on the play, I think we want to go faster than him, so I'd rather have an extra Char Belcher and then just play three lands. I don't want this game to go long. Uh, Spirit Guide, Cantor, yeah, this is fine. We're going to keep this. Alright, so we exile Spirit Guide, play Wild Cantor. Sacrifice for a green, lay of the land, get the forest, play the forest, play traverse, get the mountain, and then pass. So theoretically, let's see, if we draw Belcher next turn, we can actually try to kill him on turn three. Map is actually fine, so let's play Renegade Map. Hopefully does not go turn to Stony Silence, that would suck. No, alright. Well, we don't want to draw the forest here, so we're going to search for it. Take a draw, play a forest. Um... If we go for this Reforge the Soul just now, if right now, um, it's not going to be good for us. So, we're just going to have to wait for a little while. Maybe we can get him if... If he tries to tap out for something, then maybe we'll go for Reforge. Otherwise, or we're content just sitting here. We, we look for packs and, and uh, game-winning spells. 
The fact that he's cycling hieroglyphic illumination makes me think he does not have very many lands. So like one pack should be... Yeah, Alright, good. So now we're just looking for a, a Belcher. If we find a Belcher, we can counter his thing, and then we'll win with the Belcher and the upkeep. Search for his Kanta is fine. Uh, recross the Paths is okay, but we cannot use the Pact of Negation to protect it. Uh, we did not show him what this card does yet, so he doesn't actually know that it's a win condition. So if he lets it resolve, he's in a lot of trouble. But he... Okay, so I think... He just thinks that it's some stupid look for a land card. He doesn't actually understand why this is so powerful, so... Alright, so we go Chancellor. We're going to go Reforge the Soul. Um... We are going to go off of the Spirit Guide, so we'll, we'll have an extra mana to use. Okay, so first things first, Charbelcher, and then Pact of Negation, so that's two. So we have three lands in place, so we're going to use Spirit Guide and a Forest. So we'll have two, three, Four, then five, six, seven. All right. So we put Belcher, Pact, Spirit Guide, Spirit Guide, Hieretic, Desperate, Desperate. And if we really want to, we can actually. Uh, put another Pact of Negation on the bottom of the deck, too. Uh, yeah, let's do that, and then we will alternate it with a Charbelcher. Alright, and I don't know, maybe Nature's Claim. Sure, the rest don't matter. We're going to try to win next turn. We're going to see. I'm hoping that he's going to try to Pact Reforge the Soul when we cast it, and then we'll have a second Pact for when he actually goes to try to counter the Belcher if he draws a Counterspell off the seven cards. That's the line. Sure, go ahead. All right, well, we're doing it. <laughs> we're going to see if we can get him. Alright, yeah. F6 through your turn. Would you like to tap out? Play Teferi. Oh, beautiful! Oh, we got him. He's fucked. I, I think that means he loses. Because I don't think he can play two counter spells off of two mana. Pact of Negation is going to get there for us this game. Okay, upkeep. We are going to reveal Reforge the Soul. Alright. Cast, Exile Spirit Guide, tap that. Alright, Reforge the Soul, would you like to counter my Reforge? I bet you would love to. Get that shit out of here. Whoosh! Alright, here we go! <laughs> so, Mana Monkey, Ritual, yeah, and there's, I don't think there's anything you can do here. We're going to cast and splice uh, Desperate. 
We have double packed. Oh, yeah, I got to let it resolve. I'm, I always forget that I have to hit OK for the splice and then OK for the ritual itself. We are charging the cannon. Ready? Aim. Fire! Negative 21. <laughs> and that is how you take down control with a $30 stupid combo deck. <laughs> Two and one so far in this league. <laughs> Pact of Negation is what gets us through there. <laughs> oh man, this, this is such fun to play. Alright, uh, let's see, what do we got here? Uh, spirit Guide, and can we do anything with... We have Double Spirit Guide into Manamorphos, and we're on the play. So this is one of the rare times where Manamorphos is actually very relevant to the opening hand because we can cast a tune and then traverse at the same turn. So we're going to keep this. I'm sure our opponent's going to be very confused by our turn one. But that's perfectly fine. Because we also have then two win conditions once we find our third land. Or maybe we will draw another search off of the Manamorphos. That's possible. Oh, you know what? We should really, we should use the goblin method of firing the cannon. It's, it's uh, ready, fire, aim. <laughs> oh man, this is just fun. He's really debating over this uh, mulligan to six. Do you want to keep seven or do you want to mull to six? Our hand is just fine on the play. I would be a little bit more concerned maybe on the draw, but... Okay, he does mold a six, finally. And he's keeping that, so let's see how this turns out. So upkeep. Main phase, all right. Exile spirit guide. Exile spirit guide. Manamorphos. We're going to make two green. So green and green. Oh, perfect. We're, we're doing fantastic. So attune with Aether, get a forest, play Lay of the Land, get a mountain, forest. We don't actually, uh, well, yeah, no, we do, we do need to cast this to get the third land. Yeah, so there we go. We got all three of our lands out in turn one, so now we're just looking for uh, maybe a ritual next turn to put set up recross, and then we can, uh... <laughs> this is potentially a turn three kill hand. If we draw like Simeon Spirit Guide or something off the top, then we can get him on turn three. And it looks like it's affinity, so we very much want to. All right, now we're not getting there on turn three, so we're just gonna. This is a turn four kill. Hope that he doesn't kill us in turn four. We do have yeah Discord crew. <laughs> it looks like it's a pretty slow start for his deck, so I mean the signal pests kind of suck. But I think that it's not going to be good enough. Uh, so we have the option of doing one of two things here. We can either recross the paths and keep our... Well, we're going to reveal the deck either way. So question is, I don't think he has anything in the main deck that deals with Goblin Charbelcher. Uh, let's see. Do we want to go with Belcher or recross the paths? I think he's going to be more confused about why he dies in one turn to recross. It's less likely that he's going to find a line that wins with this. Alright, so we go Chancellor, Reforge, uh, Belcher, so that's one, two, Three, uh, four, 
five, six. So then we're going to have one, then monkey, monkey, pyretic, desperate, desperate. Yeah, we can then put pact of negation also in there. That's fine. And I guess nature's claim afterwards, just in case. All right, and that's fine. We're either going to kill him with this or we're not, so. I don't want to, like, have... See, the, the only reason that I play Recross is that I want him to be more confused this turn and be more likely to misplay what's going on here. Because even if they see you cast Recross, the chances that they're going to be intelligent enough to, like, automatically know what your deck is doing and figure it out in the, like, 30 sec seconds it takes you to stack your deck and to, like, okay, I need to dig for an ant, like... You have to have, like, Phyrexian Revoker or something. Um, yeah, we're going to reveal Reforge. He's dead. So we beat Affinity. That was kind of clutch. Uh, Going through the motions. Here we go. And Hadouken! You are now dead. Turns out Doomsday is pretty good in modern. <laughs> Alright, begin sideboarding. Uh, affinity, we definitely want Nature's Claim. And... I doubt yeah. it's possible we want the slaughter pact because he might try to bring in like Phyrexian Revoker. Um, let's see. Pact of Negation is probably not important against his deck, but there's a good chance that like Lightning Bolt could be relevant because we may need to live a few turns, so I'm fine with bringing in Bolts. We have to take out two cards. I'll take out one Metamorphose and I guess one um, Attune with Aether. So then we have plenty of answers to deal with whatever his answer answers are. And if he if he shows us something that deals with Belcher, then maybe we'll bring and empty the Warrens. All right, let's find out what's going on here. Isn't this fun, chat? Aren't we having a good time? Isn't this magic exactly as Richard Garfield intended it to be? I'm sure that he wanted people to play three land decks that can win on turn three or turn two. I, I mean, I have a hard time imagining that was not his intention. So, let's see. Def All right, there we go. Uh, this is this is a keep for us. We got a Chancellor into Lay of the Land and Caravan Vigil, so that's totally fine. And we can also uh, potentially ramp out a Recross the Path, so we're going to keep everything we need. Going to go Chancellor, Lay, Caravan Vigil. Yes, I will show you Chancellor of the Tangle. Hope your mulligan to six was not terribly good. If we're lucky, he just bore. Um, I did not. I did not take out a land here. Um, you, that is definitely a legitimate strategy. Uh, <laughs> you can sometimes take out a, the second forest and just go like turbo. I hope to hell I fucking have it mode. <laughs> but I did not do that for this match. 
we're still on three lands. This does not look like a terribly strong start for him. Oh, that is brutal. Okay, he's, he's definitely far behind right now. So let's let the trigger resolve, lay the land, get the forest, lay the forest, cast the caravan vigil, get the mountain. So we also have the option right now, if we want to, we could exile the guide to put Cantor in play. Um, there's not really a whole lot of reason to do that, I think. Well, because next turn, even if we don't draw a land next turn, we can still just, like, throw the spirit guide away for recross the paths. And so I think that we're cool. This is turn four at the latest. And so far, it does not look like he has a very fast hand at all. He drew the Memnite for turn because he didn't play it with the Springleaf Drum. Um, I think if we draw a land here, we could potentially get him on turn three. Or I, we need to have the third land out of the deck when we cast this recross the paths. So if we can do that, I think we actually have a shot with this. I think any land tutor will actually do it. Okay, now he's like, he's probably going to go on the I double infect you plan. So we might need to. We either need like nature's claim or we need to find a turn three win. Five, yeah, so, okay, no, you know what, now it's not even going to be good enough, because he's going to kill us in turn three. We have to have Nature's Claim. Right, because this will be a 5-5? Five, five? Yeah. So, we're in a lot of trouble, actually. Nature's Claim has to be the draw here. Uh... So here's the problem right now. Um, we actually kind of do need to draw the nature's claim or we're going to die. So unfortunately, I don't have any actual choice except to gamble like hell on this Reforge the Soul. Because otherwise, he is going to kill us. We're at five poison already. Yes, I will reveal it. And uh, I am I sadly, I do have to actually cast it, which means... I don't know how... We have to draw, like, a forest and uh, nature's claim. Uh, yeah. Alright, this is what we gotta do. Uh, we do not get there. We, we lose. Alright, concede. So, that sucked. Um... We couldn't get there that turn because he was going to kill us. If we were on the play, we could have got there with it. Um, Slaughter Pact would have been fine, I guess, too. Well, no, not really because we couldn't have paid for it. Uh, we could bring in Ingot Chewer, but Ingot Chewer doesn't kill the Ink Moth, which is really the only way he can, like, turn three kill us. I still think that we're going to be on the play. I think this this is fine. That was ridiculous. We got turn three by affinity. I guess we we were not the most degenerate deck in that match, <laughs> which is surprising. I mean, normally you'd think the deck that's trying to draw seven cards in one turn is the one that's going to be the dumbest one, but not that time. This is true. You could bring in Magus to turn off the Ink Moths and stuff, but I think the Magus plan is a little bit slow against Affinity, and just their regular, like, um, that was a very rare draw for them. I think their normal draws do not kill you by that point, so uh, we're, we're just kind of hoping they don't have the best possible draw, and they just have, like, a, a good or okay draw. I don't want to waste all my rituals and turn one Magus if I can go for like turn two Belcher or something instead. I'd have to cut too many cards to make that work. Uh, we have to mulligan this. And we have to mulligan this. Not like this! Please, please, not like this!
Come on, we have a we have a legitimate chance against this deck if we don't mulligan to two. That was turn three, because he attacked for five infect on turn two, and then he attacked, well, he would have attacked for another five infect on turn three. So I just conceded before he did it, but he he could have just still like, killed us. We didn't draw any outs to it, so there was no point in going for it. He kept seven. Now uh, we have to mulligan again. Um, nope. Oh, my God. No, we, we need a mana source. This is terrible. Okay, like we keep that, I guess, and put... Alright, we lose. Unfortunately, we did not find a mana source when we mold to one, so that's how this works, I guess. 15% of the time, this is just how it is, people. However, I have good news. It means as of April 10th, this is going to happen a lot less often. Because these mulligans would have been so much better if we could have seen seven cards and then chose to throw away some number of them. But this is just how it had to be. There are just, yeah, no, no mana sources means we lose no matter what. Though, I mean, I do want to still point out we almost won with one card against Jeskai Ascendancy. We had the, we had the kill on turn on the board, and he had if he would have bricked for one turn, he would have died on one card. So. That's just ridiculous. Alright. This does not look good. Alright. Pass. We have like one more turn to like, I don't know, do something before we just like completely 100% die. Yeah, I know, right? Huh. <laughs> <sighs> Well, we, we did our best. The, we, we mulliganed to Oblivion in one game, and he managed to turn three us with, with Ink Moth Nexus in the other game. So that that is what it is. Unfortunately, I don't think no matter what we draw from this point, I think we're dead. All right, cr cranial plating, I'm sure we can just, like, concede to that. <laughs> yeah, no, you've made your point. All right, we lose. We're done. Let's get this last match over. Yeah, the mulligans have been kind of rough, so alright. So we're 2-2 two and two right now. Can we go positive, please? Alright, let's see. Well, the important thing is we beat Tron and we beat Control. Um, this is actually fine, because we can Renegade map our way to victory here. We go turn one, renegade map, turn two, lay of the land and map. We'll keep the street wraith in hand so we can possibly go for an extended reforge. I don't think I talked about how that works, so I guess we'll see if that happens. Basically, the trick is instead oh, it's up against burn. Alright. He drew us a land! Um Alright, let's get the third land. Alright. So, we can't really do anything here at the moment. Okay, I think... Next, so we got a turn 4 kill, so I think we're just going to go with that. Alright, let's hope that turn 4 in the play is fast enough. Uh, that's not good. So we're drawing nature's claim. Ugh. All right. Well, he has he has to kill us this turn, or he's dead next turn. Can you deal fourteen damage to me this turn? All right. So Chancellor still goes on the top. 
Yes, but the trick. All right, so uh, the trick is we can actually uh, we can draw an extra card because of the street rate. So we go reforge the soul, Belcher. So monkey, monkey, desperate, desperate, heretic, and I guess hacked. And what else do we want to do here? Uh, we well, the thing is, we also may not want to uh, draw the extra card because it's going to cost us two life, and we may end up dying to that. So, uh, I think that maybe we're fine with just this as is. All right. Oh shit! You know what? No, that was a mistake. I should have put Slaughter Pack there because he could play Eidolon, and then we might fuck up an Eidolon. That was my fault. Damn it. That was such a blunder. Because if he plays idle on this turn, we're actually in kind of a lot of trouble, I think. So he reveals Rift Bolt. So I, I hopefully he just does not play idle on here. Alright, let's see what happens. Bolt. Alright, are we going to die? Is Burn going to kill us in turn three? So we're at... I don't think... I, I think we're alive. Eight. Oh no, he had exactly lethal. Damn it. That's not fair. Burn killed us on turn three. It's okay, Modern is not a degenerate wasteland at all. We're, I haven't died on turn three like in two separate games now. <laughs> Here I am playing a nice fair deck. I'm trying to win on turn four. <laughs> no, that's fine. He, he got there turn three. There's nothing we could do about that. So for burn, um, we need to be have Lightning Bolt to kill off Eidolon. Uh, Magus of the Moon doesn't really do anything against them. Street Wraith is going to be absolutely terrible. Uh, Pact of Negation, we might need that. Um, yeah, it's hard to say, honestly. The problem with Pact of Negation is that we can't use our Greek Cross Pile with Pact and normally, if if Burn's going to let us resolve something like, well, I don't know. It, it seems very unlikely that this Pact of Negation is going to be super relevant, but I'm not boarding in any more of them, and I don't think I want Empty the Warrens. I'll just take out one. Uh, it's probably bringing in, like, Destructive Revelry or something of that sort, but... That's fine. Alright. Yes, I want to play. Um, no, I have to mulligan this. Uh, this hand is also hot garbage. We have to mulligan this, too. No, we definitely need Pact of Negation. Because, or, or, I'm sorry, Slaughter Pact, because if we're going to go on a reforged plan, we need to be able to kill Eidolon and not take, like, 15 damage, or 16 damage. Um, I guess it doesn't matter. This hand is okay. It's not great. We're going to play Renegade Map, and then if he plays a turn one Goblin Guide or something, we can just bolt it. Nourishing Shoal is not the worst idea. I mean, I could see that. It gives us something to do with those Chancellor of the Tangles that get stuck in our hand. I'm definitely bolting this thing. Uh, upkeep, I don't want to draw the other land, so... Let's get the mountain now. Okay, this is promising. Let's play the mountain first. We're going to lightning bolt this thing. 
We're going to Caravan Vigil. Uh, Battlefield. We'll play Wild Cantor. And then next turn, maybe we can play Charbelcher. And then go for it. So turn 3, Belcher. Turn 4, kill him. Trying. Not bad for a mold of five. All right, Goblin Guide's fine. Pyretic Ritual. Okay, so no matter what happens here, um, Pyretic Ritual ensures that we can cast Char Belcher, even if he like paths this. I just hope he didn't bring in like Deflecting Palm. Do we want to use this ritual? Um, I would like to keep a blocker on board if possible. Alright, let's pass the turn and see. If we untap, we kill him. If not, then we don't. We're not attacking. I want him to like waste his turn doing something like Searing Blaze. Um, sure, let's block Goblin Guide. Okay, well, if he taps out at any point, then we can just Belcher him, so. I don't want to do it right now, because he might actually have Deflecting Palm, so. We can just activate this Belcher at any time that we want to, and he's dead. So, I'll wait for him to actually just do something. Otherwise, we can afford to wait a little bit to see if we find Pact of Negation. May as well play around cards if we have the time. If we get to like 8 life or so, then I might consider activating Belcher. Sure. He's being very careful to not tap that planes in, the, in that sacred foundry. Traverse. Okay. So what, what, what do we got going? Oh, you know what? I can actually Belcher the stupid Goblin Guide. I'm going to do that. Yeah. We're going to Belch Goblin Guide. Why not? That way, if he has Deflecting Palm, it doesn't kill me. It also gives us another chance to draw a Pact. Uh, we still drew this traverse anyway. All right. Oh no, you're right. You know what? That's that's correct. If deflecting palm would have killed us anyway, screw it. If he had it, he would have cast it. Whatever. Um, that's not good. Doesn't do anything. Okay. He is ridiculously dead. Alright. We so so now we're gonna be on the draw. Huh. On the draw against Burn, how do we do this? I guess we could go hyper just like only have two land modes. Hmm. What do we think? Should we go for two lands in the draw against Burn, or do we want to keep three?
I'll give it a couple of seconds to wait. Uh, chat, what do you think? Two lands or three lands? Do we want to really fucking gamble on this, or do we want to... Should we really gamble on two, or do we want to just go with the consistent three? I'll get, yeah, I'll, I'll wait a few secs so the uh, stream catches up to the chat. Yeah, this is true. Um, hmm. All right, we're going to keep three. Screw it. All right, that's fine. It's our last game of the night. All right, this looks promising. We actually have ourselves a way to win this game. Okay, suspending a Rift Bolt to start off with is probably the best possible thing that could have happened for us. Okay, we might have a turn three kill. All right, so we're going to go Forest. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter that much. We're going to go Caravan Vigil. Didn't matter. We have all the lands anyway. Then next, so we can actually go for it in turn three. Can't, we're going to try to get there. If Burn does not have a turn three kill, then we win. And since they did not play Goblin Guide in turn one, I don't think they're going to kill us in turn three. I feel pretty good about this. So let's go with uh, Mountain, Exile, Spirit Guide, Manamorphose, Casta, uh, Recross the Paths. Okay. Let's do it. Actually, I guess we didn't really need to do that. Okay, uh, no, we don't have to cast Manamorphose. What am I doing? We can just cast Recross. That's fine. We do have turn three, so... We'll see how this goes here. So, Chancellor... And we, we have Manamorphose, so we actually can get the extended pile. Uh, reforge the soul. Okay, then we want to go for... Um... Oh, but the only the only problem is the pact is in our hand, so I guess we're just gonna have to hope for the best on that. All right, Belcher. So one, two, three, four. Um. So we have yeah, Belcher, Spirit Guide, Spirit Guide, and then Spirit Guide. So that's four cards, and then we need Ritual, so five. Ritual is six. And yeah, we're going to need uh, the Simeon, I think. That, and we'll put the Slaughter Pact underneath it. All right, and sure, like that. Okay, bottom. Uh, pass the turn. All right, he has to kill us this turn. Oh, if I did this right, then we win this. We win the game. Okay. I don't think that's enough. 
I don't think he can 14 me. Eidolon, we cannot pact that. However, I think we can afford to take the damage. So we're going to cast two Desperate Rituals. So, yeah, we're not going to cast enough spells where it matters. Eidolon's not going to be able to kill us. Uh, there's not really any... I mean, we could... If we mana Morphos, we get to we get the extra card in the draw step. But then we're still going to take f at least four damage no matter what we do. I believe I picked all the I picked three spirit guides and a pyritic. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll do it like this. Yeah, that's fine. No, we're not casting the spells. We're going to exile spirit guides instead. But I also did put a slaughter pact as the eighth card, which we'll get to draw on the draw step anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Almost screwed that up. Okay, so now we have the slaughter pact. So here's what we can do. So we go one, two, three. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. What? I thought I put a pyretic ritual on there. Shit. We are boned. Alright, you know what? This is fine. We're still going to do this. Because he still has to deal us 12 damage. Oh, fuck. What do we, why do we do this? Alright. So we're going to go to 10. So he has to deal us 10 damage next turn. Otherwise, we can win on the upkeep. So, all right, how the fuck do we do this now? Alright, I am such an idiot. Alright. So first thing, we're going to have to cast at least... No, we, we have to slaughter pack this. Damn it! Oh, wait, no, 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 we're still in the upkeep. Okay, that's why. We didn't draw our... Oh, no, why was it another Belcher? I, that should have been a pact. I must have clicked on the wrong one. All right, that's fine. So we'll go one, two... And then we'll cast the rituals, and then we can we can still activate it in the upkeep. So we just have to not die this turn. All right, can we not die against burn, please? All right. Well, if he does not kill us this turn, then we can activate Belcher with it on the stack. All right. Seven cards in hand. Oh, there's no way. There is no way that we're not going to die, though. Oh, my God. What a blunder. I deserve to lose this. We totally... Yeah, no, we're dead. I'm sorry, chat. I failed you. I failed you, and I failed myself. I had, I had everything, and I just threw it away because I'm stupid. Well, that's unfortunate. We absolutely should have been 3-2, but I can't... I did not click everything correctly, so then we messed up, because I did not put the Pyretic Ritual in the stack. So, we could have definitely beaten Burn on that turn, on turn 3, but for some reason, I'm an idiot, so we did not do that. I mean, I have not played with this deck a whole lot online, though, so I, I'm kind of not used to it, and... The fact that you don't get to see the cards while you're still once you like click on them to reorder them with um re or yeah no with the recross the paths is still something I'm kind of not used to. When I do it in paper, I'm usually a lot, it's a lot easier to reorder the deck. But oh well, what what we went uh, two three and we should have been three two, but that is what it is. So that's that's what modern Belcher looks like. I'm sorry, chat. Please forgive me. I will do better next time, I promise. In any case, yeah, for like $30, you can buy this deck, and you can also, you know, you can be better at modern than me. Uh, Merfolk is the deck that I have, like, the, um, the most proficiency with, but this is still something that I, I, I like to play this from time to time because it's just really entertaining to me, but 
I obviously have not put in nearly as much time on this as I have anything else. And also, to be fair, I just started playing MTGO like less than two weeks ago, so a lot of the mechanics of having to click the cards in line are still kind of new to me, and I'm trying to learn them better. I think this deck is fine. Like, this list was obviously okay. Uh, we were able to beat the shit out of Tron and Control, and we should have got there against Burn. We could have beat Affinity, but he had, like, the turn three nut draw against us, so that was unfortunate. I think that it's, it's very possible to do well with this in the league, just not if you're playing poorly like I am, so... Uh, well, that's all I got for now. Um, I hope that you guys were at least entertained. You got to see us fire the cannon a few times, and it was pretty awesome. I'm sure that the people who ate the cannon to the face were not really happy with life, and any time that you get to be the villain that Tron fears, I think you're doing something right in your life, so... I'm definitely going to be jamming this deck once they implement London Mulligan, because I think it's going to be so much better then. We're going to be way more consistent in, like, turn three killing people like that. I'm looking forward to that very much, and I hope that anybody who's interested in this deck should be looking forward to it too, because this is one of the few decks that like significantly benefits from the mulligan rule change. So, probably won't stream it again until that point, but I will make it a point once they implement the testing for MTGO, I will do some streams with this to, sh to, yeah, to show people how awesome it is. And, yeah, that that's really all I got for now, so... I am sorry I failed you, chat. I, will, I, I promise I'll try harder next time, but that's all I got for right now, so I'll see you guys later. Come check out the Three Land Belcher Discord. <laughs>